So in this lecture, I want to talk about just a simple, um, simple circuit example using Thevenin and Norton equivalents. Um, kind of assuming if you've, you're walking in this lecture, you've at least heard about Thevenin and Norton equivalent circuits, and if not, there's there's a couple uh, discussions before this. But basically, the the beautiful thing is is that I can take something that looks like um, basically take something that looks like a voltage source and a resistor in series and make it be a current source and resistor in parallel. And there's a straight equivalence for this. So I might be able to take a circuit, like when I'm going to use the one over here. And what you may realize is that and this is, you know, fairly would be a fairly detailed circuit to write equations for. You can certainly write node equations or mesh equations or all of these kind of things, and that would work. Um, and then kind of work through, maybe solve the matrices, maybe do it in other ways. But I want to kind of think about what happens when you use a Thevenin and Norton equivalent for this. And because what you look at the circuit is you go, well, I have a voltage source and a current source, or a voltage source and a resistor, voltage source and a resistor, and it's like, if I only could have this resistor be in parallel with R4, R3 and R4 in parallel, I could reduce things. If I only have R1 in parallel with R2, I could reduce things. All right, so how to do that? Well, it turns out I can take these two, and taking the sort of Thevenin and Norton equivalents, I can make a current source and a resistor in parallel from this two elements in series. The same thing is true with the ones on the other side. What's nice about this when I'm done is I took these two these resistors and now I have a parallel combination of R1 and R2, parallel combination of R3 and R4. I still have every one of these elements and node, the nodes, for example, the E1 and E2, still available. I haven't really lost them anywhere. And I can still just directly solve for this. I also can look at the current through R5. If I was trying to look for current R I1 and I2, I would want to probably solve the other variables, and then I could immediately find it. So if I had E1 or E2, I'm in great shape. So this now becomes a much easier circuit to solve, but I'm still there's still more I could do here. In particular, these current and resistors, like, well, I could go back to voltage, and why? Well, that would make these two and these two in series. Like, oh. So you look at the transformation, and I get something like I would see over here. And again, I could, I'd be transforming it because I'd, I'd be getting the, a particular resistance as I go from resistance uh, from voltage to current. So I'm actually, in some sense, multiplying by R1 parallel R2. I can kind of then mathematically simplify this a little bit, and it basically looks like I get a voltage divider. Not surprising, because after all, this is R1 and R2, and so basically I got a divider out of this. Not surprising. Again, kind of good. This kind of makes some sense that I could do that. And then I still have E1 and E2, and I have R5 there. So I could actually directly analyze this. I've still kept E1, E2, and the current through R5 is still there. And then I could just solve this directly. I could write one loop equation and solve it. Uh, I could say, well, I know I've got three things in series, so I could do that to find I3. And then I could use that to find E1 and E2. There's a couple ways to do that. I could look at E1 as being a, a basically a voltage divider uh, of this, you know, between the two differences of these two voltage sources. I could get all this very quickly. Whereas when I looked at this circuit, I, I was probably looking like I was going to have a lot more difficulty. And a very simple set of transformations opens up some possibilities for these circuits. And this is one of the reasons you use these elements is that you can sort of you can build it and simplify as well as you can keep building intuition. So notice that I kept the graphs through everything. So graphically it's still there. And so I could still get a good visual approach of what's happening. And this is very important as you do circuit analysis is to, is to kind of keep the graphical side of this, not just an analytical side. Through, all, through, through your analysis. Again, having everything available is important. Nothing is quite as valuable as knowing the right solution and the right way to solve a problem to get your answer that you're looking for.